Hi there, everybody. Today I'm going to chat a little bit about sandbanks. Often, when we talk about water reading, it means as an angler that does rock and surf fishing, we come down to the beach and we've got to read the conditions, read the water, and determine where to fish, when to fish, and what to target. Now, one small part of reading water is understanding sandbanks, how they work, what species feed on them, and what they look like. So today, I'm going to try and explain to you guys a little bit about sandbanks, how I perceive it, and how I read water when it comes to sandbanks. So there's basically three types of sandbanks I look for personally when I go fishing. The first one would be a sandbank which runs from the beach out to sea. So basically a shallow bank that runs out quite a long way out to sea. It drops off into deep water and then you fish into a deep water. So that we'll call a wading bank. So we'll wade onto this bank. It's as deep as you can walk, get to the front, throw a long throw into the deep water and you're fishing. Generally when we fish those banks, we're fishing for non-edible species like sharks and rays. The second bank I'll be looking for is a long bank. So it, you're gonna have your beach, a deep trough, and then a long sand bank at the back. Um, this bank could be 100 meters long or kilometers long. So that is a long narrow bank and you get certain species that feed on those banks. Then the third one and my favorite sand bank to fish is an isolated bank. An isolated bank is a small little sand bank that's all by itself, deep blue water all around it, and you fish onto that bank and on the sides and around that bank. All right, so those are your three basic sandbanks that I look for and I fish. So let's get a bit into depth about the sandbanks itself. Within South Africa, obviously, we've got a long coastline, different species feed on the banks in different areas. But just in general, I'll try and explain to you guys how these fish, or how I perceive them to think, and why I would fish certain areas on a bank for certain species. All right, so let's start off with our wading bank. So, wading banks uh, along the KwaZulu Natal, Zululand, Eastern Cape, all the way down to the Cape coastline, we often, at spring low tides or low tide, look for that long wading bank. So, we wade out on that bank, get as far as possible to the lip or the end of the bank where it drops off, and that's where we're going to start and throw our big baits for our species in KZN. We'll be targeting fish like diamond rays, sand shark, honeycomb rays, etc. If you go down the coastline, down to the Eastern Cape, you're going to target um, your reggies, your regative sharks, bronze whaler sharks, also your diamond rays and blue rays. So those are general species you would target when you're wading a bank and throwing a big bait into the big blue ocean. So you're not throwing your bait onto a bank or something, you're actually getting as far as possible and getting that big bait out there. Just for, your, for the guys that are new in fishing, be very careful when fishing wading banks on your own. Preferably you don't want to fish on your own, fish with a group. And if you can't swim, I wouldn't do that because as the tide starts pushing, it fills up very quickly and it's easy to get sucked off the lip into the deep water and you can be in trouble. So wading is for guys that are, are obviously strong on the legs. You can swim a bit and read the water. When it gets too deep, get off the bank and go find a safer place to fish. I wouldn't put young kids on their own on wading banks. Always assist your young kids by standing with them as an adult and making sure they're safe. All right, so let's talk about the second bank, which is that long sand bank or solid bank with a big trough in front of it, and then obviously the beach on this side. So for me, that's often a very difficult bank to fish. Um, along our coastline, especially in Zuland and Natal, it's not the best type of bank to target species on. You haven't got too many fish at feed on that bank. The only species that I can suggest you can target on a long solid bank in Kaiserin or North Coast area is species like stump nose. Um, they often like to feed that edge of that long bank and they feed there for crabs and sea lice and stuff like that. So if I fish at long solid bank in Kaiserin, I must probably be fishing for a species like a stump nose. Very important thing for me about fishing that long solid bank is generally when it's dead low tide, that bank is shallow, it's kicking up a lot of sand and it's not very productive. So I suggest when fishing that long solid bank, you want to fish it with a pushing tide. So you start on the on dead low or hour after dead with that first push and the bank starts filling up and there's crabs and sea lice and stuff on the bank and the fish will come onto the bank to come feed on those species. Down in the Eastern Cape, I like to target my species like the big nose grunter and normal grunter on those banks. They come onto the banks to eat the crabs and um, 
there's certain worms in the sand they come and eat. And for me personally, those long flat banks on the right conditions, the right day with a pushing tide, you do get fish like a big nose grunter and a normal grunter that feeds on them. All right, so the last one, and as I said, my favorite bank is that isolated sand bank. Often when I'm fishing for edibles and non-edibles, and I'm walking down the beach, and it's daylight hours, the water's cleanish, I look for that isolated bank. And what I look for is a bank that's got deep water all around it, it's within casting range, so preferably a long cast, and you can get onto the bank and just over it and work the sides of it. And I also look for a bank that keeps on working. So what I mean by keeps on working, it stays white all the time. So you got, you don't want water crashing on it. You don't want the waves to crash on the bank and spit out sand. You want a nice rolling wave, which brings white foamy water over the bank constantly. And the reason I look for that, the first reason I actually look for that is, I know that because it's deep blue ocean right around this bank, all little small fish are gonna come and hide on that sand bank. Because they don't wanna be out there in the deep blue, they're vulnerable, water is clean and the game fish are going to be after them. So they'll either hug that bank or they'll be on the sand bank and that's where they're going to hide. So obviously your game fish will come and shoot across that bank and they'll target those little bait fish. And that's one big reason why we fish on the banks. Um, species like cob, stumpies, kingies, all your game fish type of species like to either patrol the bank or shoot across the bank and maybe grab little bait fish that's there hiding away from the bigger fish. So fishing that isolated bank for me is one of my favorite things to do. It's very exciting. You can catch a huge variety of species and depending on where you are in South Africa, it can really, really work well. Even our non-edible species like those sand banks. Um, we often catch species like brown skates, honeycomb rays and sandies on and around those banks. They also come there for two reasons. They either come and feed on what's there, or if there's some big sharks around, they'll also sit on those banks and they feel safe in that white water, and that's where you're going to catch those species. All right, so that's my basic explanation of the three different types of sand banks. Obviously, all anglers have got their own ways of reading water, but that's my interpretation and how I see it, and I really hope that helps you guys a little bit.